Habibis, welcome to another Habibi Power Hour. I'm one half of the Habibi Bros, Siraj Hashmi. I'm joined by my brother from another mother, Jay Kobe Mujahid, a.k.a. Bob Malik, a.k.a. Jason Briggs, <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. Branson Taylor. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Bringing in the Habibis in. What's good? What's happening? <laughs> Hope y'all had a good Fourth of July weekend. I, I, don't, I mean, now it's like if I wish anyone a Fourth of July, like a happy Fourth of July, uh, it's like Christmas where you gotta be worried about you know, who you're <laughs> who you're who you're wishing it to because they'd be like, oh, I take offense to that. Exactly. Now, now it's not only Trump is allowing us to say Merry Christmas, but he's also fighting the war against uh, J- July 4th. Yeah. I mean, I, President Trump ended the war on Christmas and opened up a new front on <laughs> July 4th. The I mean, on July 4th. what the shit? Okay. Uh, right. Before we before we get into everything Jihad on tap, uh, I got a quick plug. Um, because this is actually the probably one of the bigger things that's happened. Um, one of the bigger gets that I've gotten. So for some uh, of you who are aware, I, I host another podcast um, through my actual employer um, where I actually make money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, <laughs> this doesn't really pay the bills. I still, got, I still got a nine to five job. People might think it's the list. No, it's not the list. Uh, the, the list <laughs> is starting to pay, but not that much. Um, no, I, so my, uh, podcast hashing it out, uh, I interviewed Jeff Sessions this week. And so on Friday, uh, the former attorney general and, uh, the former U S Senator from Alabama, who is vying to recapture his seat again from Doug Jones, who is the incumbent Democrat. Um, he, uh, Sessions stands at a really tough test against, uh, Tommy Tuberville, who's the former Auburn coach got the endorsement of Donald Trump um, because uh, Sessions recusal and the Russia probe is like the one thing that Trump feels is like the the, the ultimate betrayal. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that, that was a cool, uh, cool interview. Um, I I won't give, get too much into it because I want you guys to like, where can they find it? Where, what, um, what, what, so what, what, it'll be on, it'll, it'll be on YouTube we, through the examiner, um, YouTube channel. I'll post it on my own just so that, uh, you know, on, on this, on this YouTube ba- bad boy right here. Um, I really should start posting it. I don't know why I don't post my, uh, hashing it out on my, my page, but I should start doing it. It'll also be on uh, Apple and, and Spotify on iTunes and, um, yeah. But anyways, uh, Jihad on tap. Let's do it, babies. Uh, Habibis, uh, very first thing off the top um, is I woke up to this news, uh, this article from Forbes magazine about rapper Kanye West. You know, you know that guy, the guy who never the gift that keeps on the gift that keeps on giving uh, Kanye West running for president saying it's not a joke he has basically he's running under a new banner called the birthday party and the reason why it's the birthday party is because he says when he wins or because when we win it's everybody's birthday Uh, (laughs) his campaign slogan is yes uh and a few other things he is suspicious of the of a coronavirus vaccine. Got all anti-vaxxer, uh, saying that vaccines are quote unquote the mark of the beast. Um, he believes he's pro-life. He believes um, this is what he said about Planned Parenthood. He said, "quote Planned Parenthoods have been placed inside cities by white supremacists to do the devil's work." End quote. And then, of course, Kanye um, said that he wants to create the white house and the organizational model of Wakanda and Marvel's black Panther. (laughs) So so there's that. And then um, he's, I I guess the biggest takeaway is that he no longer supports president Trump says that he is taking off the red hat. And Jay, my question to you is how serious do you take that? Oh, 
not at all. I mean, it's how can you, especially after reading that interview that he had with Forbes, it's just, well, it's all over the place. And he does really sound like somebody who's in desperate need of, of help. I mean, mm-hmm. I know, I know how people like to, to rag on um, like Stelter and other people who are making, you mean you claims, <laughs> yeah, making claims about Trump's health or making claims about Hillary's health. I think, uh, yeah. I think there's a legitimate case here for Kanye though. And um, him putting his hat in uh, the race, right now is just the icing on the cake of what 2020 is. I mean, it's just how crazier can we get this shit going? And yeah, I I mean, like we thought about how the first half of 2020 was just the absolute fucking worst thing. The worst six months we've ever had in the history of mankind. I'm sorry, people kind. I don't want to offend anybody. I pull out my Justin Trudeau (laughs) bullshit. Um, (laughs) God, I can't believe you said that shit. Um, and then, you know, July 2nd marks like the, the halfway point in the year. And then July 4th, Kanye just comes out with that bullshit on uh, saying he's going to be running. And right. that has to be like the perfect way to kick off the second half, is it not? Oh, I think so. Absolutely. I mean, it goes on. It goes on to show. I mean, we have Dems, Democrats saying that they want to tear down George Washington statues or even open the debate to it. Um, and then we have um, Trump doing the Mount Rushmore uh, speech on mm. July 3rd. And then July 4th, we're seeing all these articles coming out that it's the most dis- divisive or racially divisive uh, speech to come out since George Floyd and, and the coronavirus and all this kind of shit going into play. Um, I mean, I don't understand. I don't know what can top this other than the fact that aliens actually coming in here and and attacking us and telling us that we need to have sharia in our hearts and a pro and a probe in every ass oh every mom's ass that's for sure i'm just thinking like if if aliens did come down and they anally probed everyone i can only think of jay being like the ringleader of that just being like (laughs) getting on tv because obviously the discussion will be on cable news would be like, should aliens be only probing every single person on, on the planet? And Jay would be like, fuck, yes, they should. <laughs> <laughs> those asses think- need those asses need attention. Uh, hell yeah. I think there would be a lot more smiles on people's faces after the probing. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Real quick. Uh, now, for anyone who's worried, like. I don't hate Kanye. I actually really like Kanye in spite of all the stuff that he said. I think his music is still dope. And uh, I guess it's hard. You have to like compartmentalize the art from the artist. And while he uh, is an individual which who, who has been open about his mental illness with bipolar disorder, I obviously wish him the best. I don't wish him any ill will. Um, I really cool. hope that whatever ends up happening, uh, it ha- it's for the best for Kanye. So next up, um, everybody seeming, uh, seemingly melting down over Harper's Magazine publishing a letter. And it was an open letter uh, titled, A Letter on Justice and Open Debate. And the letter touches upon cancel culture and stifled free speech. Um, and this ignited tons of fiery debates on the Internet. And uh, a few people that I know have signed it. Um, of course, um, all of them have been have now been canceled. So me saying that now makes me canceled. So uh, mm-hmm. apologies, Habibis. Uh, I will no longer be able to do the show anymore. <laughs> but uh, let me just really quick just gloss over the, uh, the letter itself and the brief argument that it makes um, in favor of tolerating divergent ideas and opinions um, and is against ideological conformity. Here's how it reads. The forces of illiberalism, illiberalism, God, I can't even speak right now. The forces of illiberalism. Did I say that right? You you got to get the dick out of your mouth first. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, The forces of illiberalism are gaining strength throughout the world and have a powerful ally in Donald Trump, who represents a real threat to democracy. But resistance must not be allowed to harden into its own brand of dogma or coercion which right-wing demagogues are already exploiting. 
the democratic inclusion we want can be achieved only if we speak out against the intolerant climate that has set in on all sides. The free exchange of information and ideas, the lifeblood of a liberal society, is daily becoming more constricted. While we have some, uh, while we have come to expect this on the radical right, uh, censoriousness is also spreading more widely in our culture. An intolerance of opposing views, a vogue for public shaming and ostracism, and the tendency to dissolve complex policy issues in a blinding moral certainty. And then it just goes on to say that, you know, we value free speech and all that other stuff. And, you know, we're denouncing calls to cancel people. Um, right. And all of a sudden you're seeing people like trying to cancel Noam Chomsky. They're trying to cancel Matt Iglesias from Vox. And these are liberals, you know, people on the left trying to cancel other liberals who want to have free debate and the exchange of ideas um, no matter how much they disagree with them. And we're even seeing like, a, oh, and, and of course we got JK Rowling, um, the author of the Harry Potter book series and pretty much everyone. And, and in case you didn't know who she was, I personally have always been like, like with LeBron before he got political and JK Rowling before she decided to weigh in on the trans debate, I have always hated them because of their work. <laughs> 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 no, that's the funny thing is, that's what's funny, is that people think now that these that they've been red-pilled or that they are now on the right and all this kind yeah. of stuff, but that's, that's never further from the truth. Like, you're not going to see J.K. Rowling now start voting for the Tory party and shit like that. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but she has these views on a certain aspect of, uh, you know, what's happening in society, but she's not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. And that's what this letter is about. It's about the... All these people from different view sets coming in and saying that, look, we need to settle down on this cancel culture and, mm -hmm. and actually be allowed to talk about these certain things because yeah. they're they're squashing even factual discussions. I mean, not everything J.K. Rowling is, is saying is absolutely false. Mm -hmm. Some of it can be false, but to just say all of it is false and that she needs to shut up, that's the problem. Yeah. Because some of the stuff she's saying is true, when you're saying all what she's saying is false and she needs to, to shut the fuck up about it, it's it's going to start making people think that, you know, you're full of shit and you need to yeah. start allowing to, to hear. And you can tell her what she's wrong on and also right. expand on what she's right on. Yeah. For example, I, the trans I, issue I, stuff. Uh, one of the talking points uh, on the left, at least uh, 10 years ago, when I was a... Uh, um, more liberal than I am now. Um, I consider myself to be a pretty much in the center, um, even though everybody just calls me a gay and so live, which, uh, you know, it's not, it's not entirely it's not wrong. <laughs> it's not technically <laughs> false. I mean, <laughs> I am, I can be a little gay, a little bit in cell and a little bit live. Um, but essentially one of the talking points on the left is that uh, the main delineation between um, liberals and conservatives is that liberals are open-minded, you know, that they are tolerant of other people, uh, who are different from them. Um, and it mainly focused on like their identity. So the, the whole idea of identity products, uh, politics, um, usually didn't factor into actual thought. Um, now today that's completely flipped on its head. And it's now that conservatives, um, well, not entirely are open-minded, but definitely are more open-minded than uh liberals and progressives at this point and uh i just find that i, I mean like with with the exchange of ideas uh on the right. right you can have that you can have a robust debate um about things like abortion or things like immigration um or, or you know or what us's role should be in the world or you know things like statues and like everybody uh understands it is a political debate not where people should be taking things personally and it's just everybody on the left takes things personally it's like right. you having these views is violence to me and that's why you're seeing like people like in box you have that uh that trans editor a trans woman editor i'm blanking on her name it's like Am, uh, emily uh it's, Vander it's something. something yeah yeah emily vander something I'm, i apologize emily i don't I, i'm sorry i don't remember uh your name but um she was she wrote 
a letter to her bosses trying to get Matt Iglesias reprimanded. And Matt Iglesias is a co-founder of Vox. Uh, right. And she's and, like, and I don't want anything bad to happen. I don't want him to get fired. But like uh, his words are violence and I can't I feel unsafe. Like what what, what the what kind of fucking planet are we on right now? No, exactly. And, and the funny thing is, she said anti-trans dog whistles like I don't. So like just because he's on debate, the same list, just because he's on the same list as like J.K. Rowling, who has uh, had views that many people believe is an, are anti-trans. Or transphobic. I know. Or and transphobic. The thing, and the thing is, is like, look, if you want to change these people's minds on something, then you want to have a discussion with them. Right. Saying that they're just wrong and they, they need to, to, to stop talking and we need to destroy their lives just solidifies their um, position. Mm. Uh, it, it feels like that they are the ones who are trying to um, bring out these ideas in the in the right way. And you're just wanting to be a fascist about it and destroy them when, when yeah. talking about it. And the most concerning thing about this is a lot of journalists came out against it. Journalists yeah. came out against open exchange of ideas and free speech. Yeah. And not only did they come against it, they're coming out and lying about it. Like there's a, the New York Times piece. And uh, I think her name is, uh, Fa, uh, I forget her name. It's like uh, Farah or something like that. Who's part of Oh, that. yeah. She blocked me. I can't even remember her name. And I just like, I just decided not to remember. <laughs> <laughs> right. But her, her, she, she and uh, the New York Times article said it was spearheaded by white people. Mm. And it was spearheaded by white. And the, the, the most insane thing to me is why are they making it out to be that people of color and especially the person, Thomas Williams, who is black, he's a mm -hmm. black, he's, he's black, he's biracial he, at the very least. Yeah. At the, he is biracial, but still he's black. And they're just wanting to wipe him away as white. James oh, it was uh, it was Mina Harris who says, "Can we define cancel culture as predominantly white tears or not?" Oh no, no that wasn't the one. That's a different one. Uh, no, but that that was still pretty fucking stupid because it's it's just it's deciding that the people like black people and white people, uh, black people and brown people and you know people of color, yellow, mm -hmm. whatever color they may be, coming out and saying that they believe that they need to have an exchange ideas, just painting them as white. Mm. It's sick. It was, uh, it's a very, very sick um, ideology that they have on the left. Yeah. And I think it's it's disgusting because, one, it's racist to think that any white idea is evil, therefore needs to be squashed, even if black people think on it. And right. second, it's, to say, it's deciding that people of color have no agency, that they're being mm. forced to think this way because of white people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll get more into – say that again? How do they not see this? How do they not see that they're degrading and downgrading people of color this way? I don't understand. It's it's absolutely insane. Uh, so the name that uh, New York Times writer you were citing was uh, Farnaz Fasihi. Farnaz. Farnaz. Fasihi. Thank you, Gerald Leroy, for sending that in. Um, and the I I, I love how. Uh, I, I'm seeing some of the Habibis right in the jihadacity. I'm so glad that that's actually becoming <laughs> that is... the that's becoming a, a canon term. The jihadacity of it all, right? Um, um, anyways, uh, we'll get. I mean, I'm sure this debate isn't going away anytime soon, and um, I'm hoping that um, when we uh, the next time we have a guest on the show, um, we'll be able to get into that in a little bit more detail. But right. and uh, I can, can I just say that it is so funny that the reaction from the left just completely solidified what the letter was about. Oh, absolutely. It's like when Shadi Hamid had that same um, he had a tweet last week about how if you don't have any conservative friends, uh, you're doing something wrong. And it, it was all about like not understanding what the other side was thinking. And if you're a liberal, you wouldn't understand what conservatives are thinking. And then you had like Libby Watson, who was like a former Gawker writer, um, huge liberal, basically being like proving Shadi's point. And all the replies to his tweet are just like, you don't know what you're saying. Like the, this is like uh, actual, they were basically accusing him of uh, essentially being alt right. It, it was just like the craziest shit where they were just uh, proving him his point correct 
Right, because they don't know the, the other side. So they'll be like, why do I need to listen to somebody who thinks I should die? Yeah. Why do I need to listen to people who think I should be murdered? And it's like, yeah. that's not their view, you right. fucking piece of shit. That's a, yeah, no, that's exactly what they were saying. Um, thanks for, for remembering that. My memory's all shot. Sorry about no, that. I, and, and just so I can say, I think this language needs to be called out. Like when they're saying that they feel unsafe in the workplace because they signed the letter or anything yeah. like that. It's like, you know what? Get the fuck out then. Grow up. <laughs> yeah. it's, How can you yeah. be in a place where it's saying that they want to exchange or explain shit to other people, but you can't you can't hear an opinion? It's like, yeah. Then you're in the it, wrong fucking place. I tell you, like it's it there's um a concept in uh, physics called the Fermi paradox. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Um, so just for those people, for those who don't, uh, know what the Fermi paradox is, essentially what it is, is, um, it's the, the, the idea that if there's other life forms out there, why haven't we heard from them? Um, and I constantly think about, uh, the Dan Carlin, um, hardcore history, uh, podcast, a really good job of explaining it. Uh, but he says that essentially every society reaches the point in which they find or develop tools that lead to their own self-destruction. And right now, like we have the tools <laughs> available for our own civilization, self-destruction. And essentially we just happen to find that on a social level where everybody is destroying each other. Um, and causing all of society to distrust one another. Um, and we don't, we basically are, we're just all doing this to ourselves and we're not, not able to start stop. So um, it, it was less about the Fermi paradox and more just like uh, that whole concept, but it's branched off from the Fermi paradox. And um, if you, if you guys are looking for a good podcast to listen to highly recommend Dan Carlin, Really smart guy. He does a common sense podcast. Um, that's a little bit more political. I'm more into history, but um, anyways, moving on. Uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois is in uh, somewhat of a beef with Fox News's Tucker Carlson, um, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because Duckworth went on CNN on State of the Union on Sunday and talked about um, essentially President Trump's. Mount Rushmore speech and that she was that he was focusing on quote unquote dead traitors and essentially Dana Bash the the host of the show who's interviewing her mentioned uh, that he was talking about George Washington and the founding fathers he wasn't talking about Confederate generals he wasn't talking right. about you know the Confederate army and she was she just asked her like do you think that his statue should be torn down and she's like oh you know I think we should listen to everyone like that was a pretty dumb statement and worthy of criticism. Tucker Carlson went on the show on Monday night and basically said that she's anti-American. And uh, instead of just like going attacking the argument, it made it look like he was attacking the person. And essentially, which, he I, I, which I thought he was too. And she is a combat vet who um, was – uh, enlisted in the army, um, I believe in uh, it was either Afghanistan or Iraq. Oh, in in Iraq, and she lost both of her legs and functionality in her right arm, and uh, she came back with this like huge um, clap back, as the as the kids say. And I I would say she ended that beef, but then Tucker Carlson, or at least you know some uh, acolytes of Tucker. We're saying that Tammy uh, isn't a serious politician because she declined to be to go on Tucker's show, right. not understanding that like she doesn't owe him anything. She doesn't owe him shit, and honestly, she doesn't owe any of those people shit. Especially yeah. you know the people who are calling her out over at the Daily Caller and all that kind of shit. She doesn't owe you guys fuck all. The and as you were saying. No, I'm being serious. Like, as you were saying, like, you don't need to attack her personally for these statements. What and what she said, say, 
what I, yeah yeah what she can say what, is that she was just spewing hollow democratic talking points yeah that's what she was doing to appease the fucking mob that is there and i love how people are saying like the mob or the 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 radical left and all this stuff is not a not part of the dems that's mm-hmm. why you know biden is being the uh, the the nomination or whatever but mm-hmm. the thing is you you don't hear shit about them calling it out yeah you don't hear shit about them calling out what what she in my view what she should have said is that no the founding fathers need to be celebrated despite the fact that they have this history we don't celebrate them for that we celebrate them for what they have given us as americans right now right i mean because of set up the foundation exactly because of george washington thomas tom uh jefferson lincoln fucking every one of them because and and benjamin franklin because of them like people like my dad were able to come over here and and get where they are and Mm -hmm. and be able to produce what they're producing and and provide for the next generation of people and it's because of them and despite that they own slaves and despite that they did all this kind of shit and whatever it doesn't matter what they provided for us is the fundamental rights that we have as this nation that people like tammy and the the people that she wants to appease want to destroy it's Mm -hmm. not it's not her who hates America. It's the people she's trying to, you know, appease. Hate appease. America. Yeah. They, I mean, like, I think there, I think there is obviously a, enough nuance to discuss the founding fathers and understand that while uh, slavery is obviously bad, um, it was practiced widely throughout the world at that time. I mean, in many Muslim countries, uh, even into the mid 20th century, did you have some nations still allowing slavery like Saudi Arabia? I think it wasn't until 1962 that Saudi Arabia outlawed slavery. Um, well, so, and just to, just to give you a little secret about that, they still have slavery in places like UAE, Qatar, Kuwait. Saudi yeah, Arabia. and that's the thing is like that's like the, 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 the term modern day slavery has an escape. I mean, they're using slaves right now in Qatar to build all of these stadiums in uh, for the world cup in 2022. Um, right. but like the, besides that's besides the point. I mean, it's what's it, what is interesting is that, um, once slavery was abolished in many of these Western countries, uh, the African slave trade basically transitioned East and they went to the middle East, they went to Asia, uh, and essentially slaves in Africa were brought over there. Um, which is, I mean, obviously that's, that's, you know, slavery is abhorrent and everyone should be, uh, condemning it, but that's just right. the reality. And I think there is a way for us to at least celebrate our country and yet still understand that there are many things in our history that we cannot change, but that we can at least try to make amends for. And, and I think that even if you like, I, I don't think reparations is going to make amends for the, the toll of slavery. Like that's not just going right. to be a one that's, that's a band aid on a you know a basically a a, a severed leg or a severed limb like that's not that's not going to do anything uh it might be a step in the right direction i have no idea I, we, we've never tried it um right. but i think as, as a whole we as a society can at least move towards uh being a more just society and you know this isn't going to happen overnight it's going to take years and years and generations to, to fix and i i, I think this duckworth tucker beef is really stupid but especially on tucker's side honestly yeah with with tucker's rhetoric rhetoric it is stupid he he, he's a smart guy he can actually really be able to dissect and go with the argument of what she's saying Mm -hmm. instead of attacking her personally now if she said if he said like the like I was saying, the people she's trying to appease, hate America. That's a different story. Yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, another um, another also kind of – I don't know what to think of this story because this is – we're talking about – Elon Omar basically is back in the news. And – oh, shut the fuck up. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you piece of shit. Ever since 
I had that exchange with Elon Omar on Twitter. Everyone's like, ooh, who's your girlfriend? <laughs> I just want to stab you all. Stab you right well, in the I, fucking eye. I know what's happening between you two. All right. What's you happening guys between want us? want to install Sharia law oh, okay. into the United States. <laughs> you guys are Her version's different. Like Her version's guys. different from mine. Mine is oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> mine is cooler. Hers is like straight up, you know. Hers, her, are you she, sure? <laughs> yeah, hers is, hers is over the top. All right. Anyways, um, so Elon Omar came under fire for saying, quote, as long as our economy and political systems prioritize profit without considering who is profiting, who is being shut out, we will perpetuate this inequality. So we cannot stop at criminal justice system. We must begin the work of dismantling the whole system of oppression wherever we find it, end quote. So that is what caused uh, a lot of people on the right to... Um, curse her out and you know reading that quote that doesn't seem that bad compared to all the other stuff she said i mean i think she's been more reckless with her words and um i mean maybe 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 she maybe her version of sharia has got to me and i'm compromised <laughs> um no, but i be. mean like it, it, it's it it was it was taken from that to uh they were stretching it um a, a lot of conservative sites were saying that they she wants to dismantle the U.S. economy and the political system, and I don't think she, I don't, I don't, I feel like that's kind of a stretch, is it not? To, I mean, not really. Compare the the reason why I'm saying not really is because of how she's completely talked about the United States in in views of it being evil. Um, mm -hmm. She hasn't really talked about it being like, oh, America is blah, 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 but we can actually do this and this to, to help it. Yeah. No, she goes out and says America is evil. It oppresses everybody. Like it is – we have to we have to stop corporations. We have to stop businesses. We have to – you know. I mean I don't doubt that her views are radical, and I can understand. I mean like you know, thinking a little bit more on it as we're discussing it. I mean I guess – I, I can see what, what you're saying in that, like, it is a radical position to want to dismantle the U.S., you know, economical and political systems. Um, I, I just like, I feel like maybe she is almost saying these things to get a rise out of conservatives because that really... Like, it, it, it's that essence, it's that idea that there's no such thing as bad publicity. You know, like she's being talked about in the news. And so that's a good thing for her. That helps her fundraising, uh, helps her chances of winning in November. It helps her give a million dollars to her fucking boyfriend that she slept with while married to somebody else. They're married now, though. That's her well, husband. Well, they're married now, but she was yeah. sleeping with him while she was married to somebody else. I mean, let's yeah. not, let's not hide it. She's like, yeah, this no, is we're a not, we're not. of oppression. And she gives a million dollars to her fucking boyfriend. I mean, like, that's a little crazy. Her, her I mean, like, that is a that is valid criticism to, to make because uh, when I think about how someone like her, um, and, and, you know, no one's perfect. Everyone has their own issues, but like hers are just so over the top, <laughs> like morally wrong. Like when you cheat on a spouse, mm -hmm. uh, like the person who's whose trust you're supposed to have and like dedication to the fullest extent. Like, I don't know what their marital situation was like, but if you're going to do the right thing, break up with the, with the guy and then go to the, the consultant that you were going to go with. I just well, like it. It, it, and again, I might be missing a few facts here and there, but like, it's just, and, and yeah, this is obviously the allegation she married her brother to basically avoid, uh, you know, having to be held to some level of immigration. It's, true. it's <laughs> 100 percent true. She married her brother on paper for him to to become American. It's a hundred percent true. Like it's it. I can't. I'm not going. I, I'm not. It's not a conspiracy theory. I'm not yeah. going on the deep end of like Bruce and and all this kind. Of, no, it's true. It's not an Alex Jones gay frogs conspiracy. She married her <laughs> fucking brother I, to escape immigration laws and shit. And now 
she wants to come out and talk about moral issues and all this kind of shit while she was sucking some guy's dick and giving him a million dollars. <laughs> like, fuck off, please. Oh, my God. We're so getting canceled for that. percent <laughs> Oh my god. Oh I feel like every time Jay says hundred percent, you guys gotta drink. That's that's become like a new <laughs> rule of the of the Habibi power hour. Um by the way, I'm seeing a lot of the Habibis talk shit about Arsenal. Hey, you know, we're on the surge, we're on the come up, we're doing better than Tottenham, so fuck all y'all. Anyways, moving on. Um I haven't seen them ever be above seven, seventh position. I've never seen it. What just this season? <laughs> For twenty years. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck! Oh, I hate you so much. You get forgetting forgetting about the Invincibles in two thousand four. You piece of shit. <laughs> Speaking of pieces of shit. Holy shit! Speak- that's how you, that's, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I know. I was in high school at that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of pieces of shit, uh, Deshaun Jackson, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver. By the way, I hate Philadelphia with a passion. I, there are, <laughs> I feel like yeah. everybody on the East Coast who doesn't live in New England, who doesn't live in Philadelphia, hates the Eagles or hates the fucking Patriots. Uh, so the Eagles are the worst. They, they <laughs> Philadelphia as a whole is just a bad – it's just like – Garbage. It, it is a trash city. It is the worst. <laughs> I, I, I I say this knowing that virtually the entire city of Philadelphia is going to kill me. But you know what? I don't care. You know what? <laughs> Do a Bill Burr. Do a Bill Burr. Tell him to suck your dick. <laughs> Maybe when I'm liberated from my current predicament. <laughs> when that day comes, Habibis, you'll know. I'm gonna, it's going to be one great day. Anyways, Deshaun Jackson, um, he posted on Instagram uh, a message, an anti-Semitic message that he attributed to Adolf Hitler in admiration for Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. And on Tuesday, Jackson apologized for his statements. In his first post, the Eagles responded by calling Jackson's post offensive, harmful, and absolutely appalling, um, and that the team would take appropriate action. So far, nothing has been done. He's still on the team. And I can't help but think that the Eagles set a horrible precedent because in 2013, Riley Cooper, who was a uh, Eagles wide receiver at the time, he said the N-word with a hard R uh saying i'm gonna fight every n-word in here at like some country concert or some shit like that and nothing happened to him he played for like two more seasons despite the fact that he said the n-word was caught on video it was unmistakably him and i feel like this is a mistake that the eagles just have to live with now and if they cut uh deshaun jackson then uh i think that's they're only going to make the matter worse but since he posted the, since Deshaun Jackson posted this, he had Steven Jackson, who's not related to Deshaun Jackson, basically say that um, Deshaun was quote unquote speaking the truth in his, uh, in basically a, a separate Instagram post, which he has deleted, um, but his tweet was still left up. You can uh, bet your ask that he's probably going to make the list probably not above Deshaun, but he'll, he'll probably get his phone okay. taken away. Um, and then you have Shannon Sharp on um, undisputed on uh, Fox sports, who is basically trying to go get into like this. What about ism about Deshaun and how, you know, the, the, the Louis Farrakhan isn't anti-Semitic because he told me he's not anti-Semitic. And like any time, uh, a black player does something he has to disavow and white players don't have to disavow because you have, <laughs> you have like Bob Kraft and Jerry Jones being in lockstep with Donald Trump. Like, okay. They're trying to make this comparison that like Trump is Hitler for one, um, where if anything, like Trump is just the goofiest president we've ever had. Um, and of course he always shoots himself in the foot uh, and says things that um, are definitely racist and uh but like at this point no one really cares because like we just know who he is that's just him 
Right. Um, but, but, at, but at the same time, and I'll, I'll, I'll bring you in, Jay, but just at the same time, they there's such defensiveness with Louis Farrakhan, and I just don't get it. Well, what I see, I mean, what I think about it is, is that there is such a stigma in the black community when it comes to Louis Farhan, when it comes to Al Sharpton, when it comes to hating Jews, they have this view that Jews are part of the white people and they're, they're part of the oppressors and, and they come in and they, they buy these properties and they come in and they push you out and all this kind of stuff. And, and this is what they preach. That's the problem. Louis Farhan preaches that what that Jews are the devil. Al Sharpton yeah. preaches They're that termites. Jews come in and push you and push you out of your, your property, out of your homes and stuff like that. And they are regarded as the the are like the gatekeepers of the black community. Like Al Sharpton, for example, you have people every dim. Um, candidate going and kissing his fucking ring and shit mm -hmm. and, and it just solidifies his legitimacy yeah. um and i think and we I, didn't we and also you have that uh obama photo with uh louis farrakhan um which i don't think came out until after he left office i don't know right. how you keep that shit under wraps right well the, the way you do it is the the fact that there are people in journalism hundred percent, especially the New York fucking times that think that people who are anti-Semitic, especially in the black community have a right to be, they think that they have a right to be because of this fucking social justice religion that they have is that the more oppressed you are, the more the right you have to be to hate the people who are above you in terms of success or in terms of, of their skin color, in terms of whatever. And it's going to take a lot of, fucking lot for people to understand and realize that this is not the case and yeah. one of the, the the biggest i think a tweet that needs more attention is the one from zach banner over at um at the steelers he he tweeted he tweeted a video of him talking about how jews are actually part of the minority and how that this hate that the black community have in jews are very is very misplaced and that they have to really reevaluate uh, evaluate these views mm -hmm. and he also he also changed his banner to this as well respect i mean that that really? that 100%. banner that banner uh for those um who are unfamiliar that was after the 2018 tree of life shooting in which uh i think almost a dozen jewish worshipers were killed at shabbat services on saturday um, right. It was like October 2018. Yeah, it was um, a white supremacist just ran up in there and it was in Pittsburgh. And um, yeah, um, that was that was pretty bad. Um, it was. He got very emotional in it and stuff. And I think I think it's a very important message that people need to hear and they need to hear over and over and over again. But yeah. it's not it's not talked about like yeah. his his tweet is not going to be retweeted by New York Times journalists. It's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not, it's not. All right. Let's hear from some Habibis. I saw a few comments that are pretty good. Carlos coming through with this beautiful Deshaun Jackson's favorite play is the Steve <laughs> Kyle Mary. <laughs> uh, got this, please, because this is fucking awesome. Here, let me grab that. I got it. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. <laughs> Uh, oh, I got you. All right. I just took that. All right. What else we got? Uh, Carlos coming in again with Deshaun Jackson. Damn, I did not see that pass you through me. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Um, and I love so, dad puns. Like, fuck. The, the dad jokes, they never they never cease to uh, amaze me. I'm always in awe. Um, someone at S Finley says goofy. That's it. Um, I, I assume that's, uh, in response to me calling Trump goofy. Uh, he is a narcissist and, um, an opportunist. And I don't know if anything he says, I actually truly believe, but I do right. know definitively that he is goofy. He is the goofiest president we've ever had. And <laughs> as, I mean, like as, as, I, I like I, I can't say I know what's in his heart for sure because I just I don't know the guy and uh, for one I've never met him but in, 
if you want to base him entirely on his public statements and his tweets, then yes, you could probably say that he's racist, xenophobic, hates Muslims, hates uh, people who are different from him. But at the end of the day, he is the goofiest president we've ever had. Carlos, coming back, if Deshaun Jackson ever becomes a head coach, his fave defensive play will be the Auschwitz. <laughs> I think that's just beautiful. All right, we'll get to some more questions from the Habibis in a little bit. Let's get quickly to our weekly jihad. Uh, first of all, Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's ex-girlfriend and confidant, the late Jeffrey Epstein. Again, we don't know if this man actually killed himself or not. The um, coroner, the New York City medical examiner, said that it was uh, suicide. Um and every and once that came out, everyone was like, absolutely fucking not. It wasn't. <laughs> it was uh that was that was crazy. Anyway, she got arrested this past <laughs> week uh in New Hampshire, where she was just like you know, just hanging out, just chilling. And um essentially, um she is going to be appearing on trial uh this week. I think Friday is when they're going to do it. And Apparently, look, I don't even know the 100% of what's going on. Maybe you know a little bit more than I do, Jay. But uh sounds like uh, there are a lot of people in deep shit. Are they not? <laughs> I like how you think I know more than you do. Man, well, I, shit. I mean, like. I you shit. But to be honest with you, I honestly think there's a lot of people shit in their pants right now. Oh, and yeah. Well, Prince Andrew's one of them. 100%. Because he, he's in ex- no. Uh He said 100%. Everybody drink. uh so prince andrew um he is inexplicably linked to this um there was a photo that surfaced of galane maxwell and kevin spacey sitting in uh queen elizabeth ii's um i want to call it thrones maybe the the chairs that they were sitting in like that she doesn't even sit in they were sitting in it um and I, I mean, like, where would you put uh, from from on a scale between one zero and one hundred, one hundred being like one hundred percent certain? Um, where would you say you think uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is going to get killed, or she <laughs> dies, or or she doesn't kill herself? Honestly, yeah. I, what are the I'm odds playing, that she doesn't kill herself? I like this is high ninety five percent. But I'm praying. I really am. I'm. I am praying to the gods and to everything to Allah, Fatana Allah, Muhammad, Moses, and Noah. Everyone, <laughs> Isaac. Like I'm. I'm. I'm hoping that she survives long enough to point her finger to every one of these motherfuckers. Every yeah. one of them. Every yeah. one of them, I hope they get pointed at. I don't yeah. give a shit who it is. If it's Trump, if it's Clinton, if it's Biden, if it's fucking Tom Hanks, if it's Dwayne oh, Johnson. Oh, no, 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 no. I if don't give Tom a Hanks, shit. If it is Tom <laughs> Hanks, if it is Tom Hanks, we're going to war, okay? 100%. I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to stab you <laughs> for being I right. I hope she points to every one of these motherfuckers before she dies. I mean, I really hope. I, I mean, I mean I mean suicide. I mean <laughs> dies from COVID. What? Uh, I think you posted the uh, f- photo. Uh, the, uh, was that your Photoshop of uh, Hillary Clinton in a lab? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there was a spoof. There was a spoof article about how um, um, uh, Grisline Ma- Maxwell got the virus, uh-huh. and uh, I, I had to play on it, so I posted. It. <laughs> Hold on. How did you say it again? Grisline Maxwell. Maxwell. <laughs> Grisline Maxwell. I don't Guys, even know. I can't even correct I, you I because look, look, I can't listen, even correct you because I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. I, <laughs> I've always, I've always thought it was Ghislaine. Maybe it's Gislaine. Gisla, Gislaine Maxwell. Gislaine. Gislaine. Gislaining on your face. <laughs> and I just laned my pants. <laughs> No, but to be honest, I've been drinking this. I'm I'm almost done with it right now, so I can give a review. But I'm not going to give a review until it's all done. 
Okay, good. I can't. Piece of shit. I have to drink we're all. we still got a long ways to go. Uh, I always think we're gonna get. We're always gonna finish within sixty nine minutes. Nice, but we always end up having to do more. Um, and, and that's just because of the nature of the news cycle. Everything there's just too much news going on. And right. um, oh, Jay, the cops are coming. Hi. <laughs> you can hear. Him. <laughs> I can hear it. I'm sure the Habibis can. Anyways, uh, moving on um, because there's more cancel culture stuff that we want to share with you. Halle Berry, you know the actor, the Oscar-winning actress Halle Berry, um, she pulled out of a role in an upcoming film in which she played a transgender character after facing backlash online. And basically, while she was not uh, officially cast for the role. Um, she posted it on her Instagram, uh, or at least she said something on social media. I don't really follow the story that closely because I don't give a shit about uh, <laughs> actors. That... <laughs> I mean, I give a shit, but I don't give a shit that much when it comes to like casting decision. Right. Um, right. But it's just insane to me that she would be ostracized. Uh, she would be pushed out of a role um in which like it like actors aren't allowed to act anymore and if you give if they, they they start making this argument that trans women are women and what is to bar a woman from playing a trans woman is that is that just too big of a leap now are we not ready for that are we as a society just done with like rep it's representation does matter for sure but do you only want to pigeonhole trans actors to play trans characters? Like, don't you want a trans actor or trans actress to play uh, someone who is not trans? Like, is that going to be like, are we going to flip this situation on its head where uh, you're you're going to not give these uh, even transgender actors and actresses the chance to uh, show some range? Right. Right. And to, and to be honest with you, like this goes even deeper into their um, argument. What what they like to say, and when, when we say they, we're talking about everyone on the left of mm. this trans issue, is that trans women are women. Mm -hmm. They say there's no difference whatsoever between a trans woman to, to a woman. So when you're telling me not play a trans woman, why? It, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what the argument is. It's all about representation, and I think representation... No, no. Um... Rep representation matters into it, of course. But if, mm -hmm. if we're talking about the argument where they're saying that trans women are women, then why can't a woman play a trans? You got me beat. I mean, this is a discussion that, like, seen, it's so new that I don't even know um, if it's... No, I don't you're, know if it's gonna, entirely reactionary to I, just the mat, the society we live in. It, it it's it's not only reactionary. They think that this is some kind of like win or whatever. I think yeah. it's a fucking disservice to them because the thing is, is you're going to have an Academy Award winning actress with yeah. a huge fucking name to her playing yeah. trans in uh, a positively lighted trans movie. Right. I this mean, is uh, what's get his people name? Watching this movie, this is going to get a lot of people watching this movie and seeing this issue in a positive light. Now yeah. you get the no name who maybe can't act doing this, and it's it's not going to have the same effect. And yeah, and that's, that's I mean, you had uh, Eddie Redmayne, a very talented actor, playing um, the protagonist in The Danish Girl, which is a story about a man who transitions to a woman. Back, I don't even know what year, but like. Basically, when, you know, at least 50, 60 years ago. Um, and uh, he won an Oscar for it. And n no one has said anything about it since. Uh, I just find that interesting. Anyways. Jared Leto won an Oscar for it as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. In uh, Dallas Buyers Club, he played a... Um, did he... I'm, I'm trying to recall the... Uh, he played a hooker. And he was skinny yeah. as fuck. And right. that was, that was, I mean, Jared Leto, um, damn, I don't know how he does that shit. Like that is dedication to your craft. 
Right. That is, I mean, like, can he can he be canceled for being so dedicated to his craft? We're about to find out. Maybe you know a bunch <laughs> of. I'm sure Brian Stelter. I'm sure Brian Stelter wants to cancel uh, uh, Jared Leto for playing the Joker. Fuck Take that how you uh, will. I mean, I, well, that is fine. I'm I'm okay for canceling for that because that was fucking bullshit. 100%. What? Oh, I, I thought I thought I thought it was the whole clown thing. I didn't even get no, that, you, pe- <laughs> you piece of shit. All right, I'm gonna get earned. Earn time. I'm pretty fucking lit. So while he's getting earned, I'll tell you about this. So this is this is uh, the bourbon I have finished this week. Cooper's Mark. The reason why I got this is because when I went to the liquor store, they didn't have. Uh, Angels Envy, so I got that. Uh, my rating on this would be, I mean, it's it's pretty smooth. It's a good whiskey to drink either on ice or or straight. It's totally fine. Um, I was drinking on ice earlier today because I didn't eat anything, and you can tell. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I give it a rating a six point nine out of ten. Oh, um, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not expensive. It's uh, anywhere between twenty five to thirty dollars off of off of the rack, and yeah, it's, it's oh, not good. good. I recommend it. And That's it's uh, 45.5 percent and ninety one proof, so it's gonna nice. get you fucked. <laughs> well, yeah, you definitely seem fucked because you're definitely slurring your words, and that is that it's is what totally I like to see. All. That is abs- absolutely totally haram. Um, anyways, uh, Ern is here for his annual cameo. I'm sorry, his weekly cameo. Man, if it was <laughs> only an annual thing, I'm pretty sure the Habibis would riot. Okay, moving on. China uh, and TikTok. So Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, uh, he's expanded his consideration to ban the mobile app TikTok saying it was only one of a number of Chinese companies that need to be held accountable for threatening Americans' data. Now, for those who are not familiar, TikTok is a a Chinese spy app. You hear that? You hear that, Jay? Chinese spy app. This motherfucker sends me TikToks every five minutes because I don't have it. I love Asians. Number two, (laughs) the memes are so great off of it. Like, I can't help it. I can't. I I want them to come and get me, and I want a nice little <laughs> Chinese woman to interrogate me. I'll tell her everything, anything she wants to know. I'll say it. I'll Put say her it. ass in my face. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I'll still be I, you you know, know, I you want to know America's secrets. I'll give it to you. Uh, I think of the. Uh, you know, of us getting detained by DHS or by the FBI and th- an Asian, a female Asian agent is going to walk into the room and Jay is just going to spill the beans on everything immediately. 100%. 100%. I can't help He said myself. it. He said 100% twice. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I should look. Too. I hope it gets banned because, to be honest, TikTok selling our data to China is a fucking issue, and yeah, there's a lot of fucking people on TikTok. Well, the thing is, like, just replace the app with something that's not. I mean, like, you can recreate TikTok. It's the. It's not the. It's the content creators who bring you in. It's not the app itself. The app itself is just. It's. It's just the the vehicle. Right. But right. I, I, I like everybody, everyone is so obsessed. I mean, think of how much money uh, some of these creators make uh, right. because of TikTok. It's crazy. No, it's it absolutely is. insane. But, but the thing is, it needs to be deleted and taken out. And um, Mark Zuckerberg has a very good uh, push for Facebook Live or whatever the fuck fuck he calls that shit oh i fucking i hate facebook so much and uh no, no i hate facebook as well but if that, i think we should bring back vine you can create you can create vines or create short videos then do it yeah uh and other news oh ernie i'm sorry i gotta reach here i gotta reach I, fuck 
Oh, there God we go. Damn, okay. He's so sexy. I know, isn't he? Isn't he's just so cute? Hey, buddy. He oh, is. hold on. Well, All right. In other news, um, the White House uh, has officially moved to withdraw the United States from the World Health Organization, um, and they're breaking ties with the global health public health body that was um, essentially. And uh, God, this is so bad because I just realized I said it because someone, Don Fava says Jay's 100% is the same as Siraj's essentially. I <laughs> I have never felt more under attack than I do right now. Holy shit. Wow. This is like me saying like all the time. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks a lot for that, Don. Perfect. Anyways, uh, so leaving the World Health Organization, long overdue. Of course, the libs are going to be mad. You already have uh, Senator Bob Menendez, who, by the way, uh, face corruption charges um, and got away with it and got away with it while he's touching up little fucking underage girls and shit. It's fucking disgusting. But us leaving the who is fucking amazing. It's great. We should have done it ages ago. They need to change a lot of their shit. Same with fucking the UN. These world shits, they don't give a fuck about the world. They don't. They really, yeah. really, really don't. And it needs to be called out more and fuck every fucking lib who thinks that the, these are essential essential organizations because they're not they are yeah fucking it was not. uh i i mean i i have been very anti who in the last few months because they've just completely fucked up uh the coronavirus response and a lot of it is in part uh because uh some of it is in part because the chinese lied to them but um uh, we know that the chinese are doing their um they just have too much influence over the who and um, the world has suffered as a result. Think of all the uh, what now, uh, how many millions of people have died from coronavirus? Is Are it we millions up, uh, or is it still, I think it's still uh, hundreds of thousands. Uh, like to think uh, whatever. It's, it's not only, it's not, a lot it's of people. We'll just people. say a lot of people. Well, it's not only the people who have died. It's also the people who have lost their jobs. It's also the right. people who have lost their livelihoods. It's all of these things that they go back to not only China, but the who, because yeah. you have, you have fucking people, these fucks on places like daily, uh, the, the daily beast or New York times, or all this kind of shit, trying to just solely blame, uh, Trump for all of this shit. When it's not that it is the fact that China lied, who bought the lie and who lied to everybody else. They mm -hmm. lied to everyone else. And this is what resulted to a lot of people yeah. dying. That's yeah. what it is. That's terrible. And I will never forgive fucks for, for undermining it. And no. I will never forgive the fucks for undermining what happened in New York. Because till now, they're still downplaying New York. And yeah. Maggie Herberman, whatever the fuck her name is over <laughs> at New York Times, she can suck a million fucking dicks. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, the media has not held Kioma accountable for the shit job he did over in New York for killing. I what is it like more than fifty, like thirty percent of the deaths in America is only solely in New York and in New York City, uh, city, and the like. Most 40 of the deaths of that is from the the um, what's it called from the nursing homes. Yeah, forty five percent of the deaths are in nursing homes, and fourteen percent of the actual cases are in nursing homes and so it's that's it. fucking insane to me because we want to go and say that desantes opening the beaches is going to kill grandma when the fact is guillermo killed more grandmothers than any fucking person out here <laughs> texas <I> just... <laughs> fucking florida all these places are doing great and it is just it's, it's disgusting to me i it's just I, I just disgusting to me i just gotta say um jay i i don't know how else to say this but you're drunk i am <laughs> no no i am and, and it's completely 100 percent i'm i'm worried i'm worried about all the coronavirus that's in your beer killing your brain cells right now i'm sorry <laughs> not beer in your whiskey <laughs> whiskey excuse me i don't drink beer i drink white claw uh Oh, uh, that pussy juice. <laughs> yeah, 100%.
<laughs> oh, Drake. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> okay. Uh, real quick. Um, tr so we mentioned earlier about Trump giving this uh, speech to um, in front of Mount Rushmore. And what happened was everybody lost their shit. Every, it's like I, I was making this quip on Twitter about how like Trump literally opens his mouth, he like inhales, and then like you got <laughs> New York Times, Washington Post, CNN being like, "This is dark and divisive," and then like <laughs> Trump taking a loud audible, uh, loud loud audible sniff on the microphone, and then just being like, "This is literally genocide." Right. It's just it, it never ceases to amaze, and like this has been pounded into the sand like the beating the dead horse like everything that trump says is considered to be dark and divisive and um it, it, like you mentioned to me and i don't know if you will recall this because you're drunk now but <laughs> uh it's, oh i almost said essentially oh fuck i just said it um <laughs> i'll drink yeah you drink for that Anyways, um, your mom, you said that your mom listened to the speech and it was not as, I mean, no, I listened no, no. to the speech she too. Did, she didn't listen to the speech. Like, let, let Oh, me, she read it. Let she read the transcript. She, yeah. She, she's, she's very liberal and she mm -hmm. can't stand listening to Trump's voice. And I can understand it because he's a fucking moron. But at the end of the day, she, she read the speech and she she also saw the reaction to the speech. And it's this it's it's so fucking insane to me because what you have to understand what not understand, but what it shows is that yes, journalists fucking lie to your face. They lie to your face. They're in a group in like WhatsApp, in Slack, whatever the fuck you want to call it. They're in a group together, Washington Post, New York Times, LA Times, fucking whoever, wherever. They mm -hmm. text each other. And every single one of them tweeted the same fucking shit about the speech. That it yeah. was racially they all the, divisive. All, all had the same talking points. Right. Racially divisive and all that kind of stuff in, in, the, in the times we are in now. And it is... It's mind boggling to you because it yeah. goes to show if that's what they want to say, if they want to say it's racially divisive, then they want to say that the founding fathers are garbage. The founding fathers are racist, white supremacists, and we should not we should not honor them. And mm -hmm. you're not going to get the majority of Americans to follow you there. There's only a certain percent percentage of people who go to Harvard or Berkeley or all of these Fucking pieces of shit institutions that get their minds like disgustingly corrupted with these critical theory fucking whatever, you know, lesbian dance, gender studies, garbage. <laughs> I'm just going to let you keep going. I, I, thank I you. Right and, now. And, and they graduate from there and then they become these journalists that are completely shit. They are shit. They're the, the campus culture has now infected the institutions of journalism and journalism is no longer uh, objective it's completely subjective and they want to in input their own feelings and their own like you know garbage reality into the narrative and that's what we saw that's a hundred percent what we saw coming out of the new york times washington post and shit you just said a hundred percent drink <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay. Our final topic before we hear from some Habibis um, is the coronavirus <laughs> update because um, you have the Cuomo agency report basically blaming other factors for um, all the coronavirus deaths and not Cuomo um, for the nursing home deaths. And... Then also you have uh, the Brazilian president, Shair Bolsonaro, saying, oh, fuck, <laughs> not even drinking. <laughs> I've been uh, over the head, you fuck. Yeah, I'm drinking, I'm drinking diet root beer. That's how, that's how based I am that's right now. That's how Muslim you are. That's You're how such Muslim. a virgin. 
marriages, bro. I'm pretty sure even after you're married, you're still not. <laughs> Sorry. Jay, that's not nice. Ernie, my son is right here, okay? Take that back. That's a slum phobia. <laughs> No, I'm taking it back. I mean, you married a Jew being a Pakistani Muslim. Like, you're doing more for Middle East, Eastern peace than anybody else out there. True. I mean, if anything, both of us are getting fucked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you also have the Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, contracting coronavirus. Um, and I think it's important to make the distinction that Bolsonaro is worse than Trump. 100 percent 100 percent worse than Trump. drink 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 motherfucker god damn it i don't even <laughs> notice that i'm doing this <laughs> but one thing i wanted to say is when you were talking about uh kiyomo and and the fact that he was blaming all these people you still have nothing mm. zero fucking articles tweets or anything from new york times um, Maggie Herberman stating that this is wrong, mm -hmm. that he needs to be held accountable more for this kind of kind of stuff. Nothing. She's completely silent. She's talking about fucking this Mary Trump gossip family bullshit book. Then she is talking about uh, Kiyomo blaming um, um, healthcare workers for the deaths than his own fucking policy. And it's completely sickening. 100%, 100% sickening. I don't give a fuck what beat she's on or anything like that. She was, she was very passionate and she was very, very demeaning on other people stating that media was not holding Cuma uh, accountable. And now you see her not saying shit. Yeah. Absolutely zero shit. She has like two tweets about it and that's about it. Would you say 100% shit or 0% shit? <laughs> you, <bro. laughs> yeah so one that that was number one number two uh look at the screen how how do you say that name jay jar blazenaro <laughs> also jar look at fuzzy look at fuzzy fuzzy jay look look at fuzzy right here fuzzy jay you're gone which one yeah, that that one right here fuzzy fuzzy <laughs> listen closely I know you're hurt from when I told you to lick my balls, but I want you to lick my ass all the way up to my balls right now because I drank a whole fucking bottle tonight for you fucks. Right? No, but to be honest, Buzz BB is 100% like hilarious. He is amazing. He comes up with like the most amazing and names. And I, I can't believe I and feel like every week. you have to follow him on, on Twitter. You have to. Him. Like he is fucking amazing. Oh my god! They're just too many. They're too many good memes. Uh, Prison Mitch, Midnight Mitch. Uh, that guy. He's he like Prison Mitch. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, Crying Brassenstein. Uh, he's another one who's been. I don't think he's uh, watching this right now, but he's another one who deserves a shout out and a follow. Cox. He, he, Cox. I forget his Cox as well. He needs he, and also Cox needs to allow us to fucking tag him on pictures. Yeah. What the fuck, Cox? <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Um, let's see. Let's hear from some Habibis uh, as we wind down uh, this evening of the Habibi Power Hour because we actually finished relatively on time. We just want to hear from the Habibis. And Ernie uh, will be getting a, quite a nice snack after this. Ooh, Matt Blakely asks, can we talk about your Tuberville piece that dropped the night after his campaign bus caught on fire? Okay. <laughs> So, um, essentially, what? Oh, god damn it! I said essentially. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> you son of a. Oh god. And I don't. I. I you say a hundred percent, and I notice it. I don't even know this one. I'm saying essentially. I don't know the shit right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know the shit, anyways. Uh, you wouldn't know the shit if it came out of an ass. Uh. <laughs> Uh, so Tuberville, uh, who was coach at Auburn for almost 10 years, he was hired in, in 1998 
and he had a player that was a rising senior. So the the season finished. This is you know spring of 1999. Uh, the player's name is Clifton Robinson, and what happened was uh, this uh, this player Robinson. He's a receiver. Play really well. He actually, I think he led the team in the previous year with all purpose yards. And um, he was arrested and charged with second degree rape. He was 20 years old. And he had sex with a 15 year old. Okay. This is Alabama. Okay. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> the rest- restrictions are somewhat looser down there. Um, in any event, uh, this kid was arrested, charged with second degree rape. Tuberville suspended him indefinitely. So he was, uh, until it got resolved and second degree rape in Alabama law is when, uh, someone between the age of 12 and 16 has sex with someone who's at least two years older than them, uh, above the age of 16. So, uh, if uh, say like a 16, like a 15 year old is having se- has sex with like a 19 year old of that, that would be second degree rape. I think that's like the, or, or 18 year old that would be considered second degree rape, um, at the bare minimum. Eventually this case got pleaded down. Um, and, and rather than risking to the 20 year prison sentence and the $10,000 fine, this guy pleaded guilty to the contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And he was, you know, Tuberville welcomed him back and told the press he was going to sit down with him, tell him that we do things right around here and that he would come up with the right right punishment for him. He suspended him for one game and it was against the like the most inferior opponent that they beat, uh, Appalachian State. And this the report I did was based on public information. It was all out there. It was just me connecting the dots. It wasn't really a scoop. It was just more like. This happened, and and why was it that he only got one game suspension? And I heard back from uh, like the Tuberville campaign uh, eventually responded to me, um, but they wouldn't uh, give me a statement on the record. They wouldn't uh, deny uh, anything. They gave me a statement from some other dude who wasn't Tommy Tuberville, and. Um, I essentially I leveraged that to get Jeff Sessions on the podcast because they were actually pretty pleased. So <laughs> I'm sure that's kind of how that went. Uh, and before I forget, Billy Finn uh, comes through. Uh, he so he's I don't I don't fully understand, but I'm, I'm just going to read it out. Plug my Federalist Papers thread. I'm reading briefly, analyzing a Fed paper a day. It's important with our founding under attack to reacquaint. We need to know what we're defending. So uh, Habibis go. Uh, and find Billy Finn on Twitter. He's got this thread going on. And, and he also says, like, every college, major college coach has done something exactly like that. Um, back you, to the you scroll up, story. My mom, my mom actually says something. You scroll where, up where, we see, where we see? I'm looking. Mary, I'm looking. Mary Lynette, I think that's her name. Mary Lynette. <gasps> I can't see. Oh, her. she loves Ernie. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, she does. Ernie loves you too. Uh, where else? That. Uh, Mary says, you're dragging me into this episode without coming to see me before I leave during a pandemic and drunk, no less. I may never forgive you. Drink some water. (laughs) First of all, mom, you know why I didn't come to see you. And secondly, you're going to, she's flying and she's, she bought all these like has like hazard stuff, like a has suit. Uh And she bought, (laughs) she bought like a piss tube and stuff so she can stand a catheter <laughs> no so she can stand while puss- pissing so she doesn't that's a, have to that's a catheter the- that's what a catheter is okay thank you it's a catheter whatever and she's she tweets she she doesn't tweet it but she texts me saying that this is not penis in me <laughs> and it's like i don't have to know this shit like i know <laughs> You follow, like you follow me on Twitter and know that like I enjoy eating ass. I talk about eating ass and stuff, <laughs> but that's your prerogative. Like you follow me on Twitter. I don't text you this shit. Like, god damn it. Wow. Anyways, is that I not- hope you have a safe flight, mom, and you get there safely and everything. But I, I do know talking to my brother, Almar, that you didn't make grape leaves. 
and that's on you. Hundred uh, percent. Are you a big grape leaves? Oh, you, try, you also oh said hundred percent. I love. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I love uh, grape leaves. Grape leaves are pretty good, man. Mm-hmm. Um, well, was oh, she flying back to Maryland? Yeah, she is. She's gonna fly back to Maryland. It's been. She's been here for like six like, months. Wow. Well, I mean, people are me, correcting me what like a catheter is. I don't. I guess I'm. I'm thinking of catheters in the more medical sense. Right. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I guess it's no, just. No, she's a piss been bag. here for like three months. Maybe, three. Maybe three, it is three, just the piss bag, and I'm uh, mistaking it for other shit. Um, okay, H- Habibis, get those last questions in before we wrap up here, because. You know, Ernie's he's getting tired. He wants to have some treats and you're all forcing him to stay on my lap. <laughs> so this is more your fault than it is mine. Um, oh, OK. So being dude, Nate BB asked, will that Habibi flag behind you, Siraj, be part of the merch? So this is a prototype that we got right here. Um, right. It. It is uh, the logo of Habibi Bros, and we are essentially. Oh God, I said essentially. <laughs> God damn it, bro! We are trying to come up with some designs, and this is just a prototype. We're probably it'd be a little bit different from that, but that's just for you guys to know. And um, uh, Cox Habibi, Habibi smokes Cox ass. Would you do a show with your brothers, uh, with my brother or with Jay's brother or both? Like at the same time? Like, are we Eiffel Towering these brothers? Are we doing? Are we doing a foursome right now? Like <laughs> Haram brothers <laughs> <laughs> from Carlos. Um. So, I mean, if my brother's up for it, I'll do a show. Yeah, with him. I mean, <sighs> I love my brother. Don't get me wrong. I'm just going to leave it at that. Leave you guys to interpret that. Do I think he would be a good person to talk to on the podcast? Mm. <laughs> would it be me trolling him for an hour and a half? Probably. Um, And how do I say this? My brother is... Um, he's gotten better <laughs> politically. My mom's got better too. Like, that's, uh, that's he's gotten idea. better and it's only because I've engaged him. But, right. uh, if he, if I left him to his own, um, I, 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 I wouldn't know. I don't know if I could, you know, still be as close with him as I am today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, essentially, uh, oh, God damn it, bro. You said essentially. And you're like, essentially. God like, damn it. God. That's my filler word. God. Um, I'm all up. Jack K asks, what potion do you take to shield thyself from canceledness, Siraj? Obviously, we know Jay's. Is Jay's eating ass? Because that sounds like it has to be it. Because I, I, I've never seen anybody able to tweet about eating ass that out in the open and not get canceled like uh, you are essential oh, god damn it <laughs> Fuck, bro <laughs> but i'm like essentially the mascot for eating ass essentially <laughs> <laughs> oh ernie is so freaked out right now i'm sorry buddy i didn't I didn't mean it. You're good. <laughs> He's it. like, ass? Where can I lick it? Yeah, Ernie, he is a, he's a good he's a good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just kissed him on the eye. Fuck. He's probably infected. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie, do you want to say anything to the microphone? Screenshot that. Hell yeah. Ernie, come on, go ahead. What do you want to say on the mic? Hmm? Here, I'll I'll switch it so it's earn time. You get the banner. There you go. Go ahead, say something to the mic. You got nothing? Come on, what's on your mind? He just hates me. All right, Habibis. I think uh unless you guys got anything else. 
Um, I'm essentially done. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a... I'm, I'm 100% done with this fucking burger. Okay. Well, Habibis, this has been great. I hope you all um, learned something tonight. I know I did. And that is to not say essentially nearly as much. Essentially. 100% yeah, are, inshallah. Yeah, 100% inshallah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this will be uploaded onto the podcast uh, on Apple and Spotify. Um, if you happen to be re-watching this or you know, subscribe to the channel, um, we finally hit, uh, I think I think this week, finally hit monetization. That means we can actually start making money on these bad boys. Hell what yeah. up? What up? <laughs> make that paper. Make that make that tree fitty. That's, li- <laughs> that's literally $3.50. So anyways. Also, Habibis, I love you, mom. I love you. Love you, Mary. And love you. And Ernie says love you as he's licking my, my finger. Y'all been great. Uh, hope y'all have a good rest of your week. We'll see you next week on Habibi Power Hour. It'll be uh, our unlucky 13th episode. Can you believe it? We've been doing it for 13 weeks now? Or for 12 That's weeks? Insane. Insane, insane, man. I uh, haven't I've, done it earlier. Yeah. So, all right, Habibis. <laughs> y'all been great. We'll see you on the Twitter sphere. And, uh, you know, uh, stay safe out there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jay, sober up, you lush piece of shit. Inshallah. <laughs> Later, babies. <laughs>